Hey there, hello there, my name is Michael. I am a bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and today we're diving directly into what is gonna be a pretty short video because uh, honestly, it's been a really long week and I kinda wanna go lay down. Today we are going to take a look at an original creation of mine, uh, a deconstruction of a Cuba Libre. So a Cuba Libre is a combination of Cuban rum, Coca-Cola, and lime juice. It's sort of a mild interpretation of a uh, rum and coke, and there is a history to it. I have no idea what it is though. Um, I just kind of had the drink come back into my knowledge of existence because I was watching a video by a channel called Booze on the Rocks, where they were talking about some of its history and making one. I thought, huh, well, I don't have any coke in the house, but a Cuba Libre sounds kind of good. Oh, but I don't like high fructose corn syrup and how like sugary sweet coke is. I'd really rather have something else. And then I thought, actually, I'm going to make it better. <laughs> what we're gonna do today is make my interpretation of a Cuba Libre, which is a deconstruction of one, into more complex and unique ingredients to make something a little more mature. Now the predominant flavor in Coca-Cola is cola root. Maybe it's a bark actually, but in either case, it's essentially, you know, herbally reminiscent. There are a couple of ways to accomplish that. The first was which of which was with cola syrup, which you can buy at some specialty food stores. I thought that that was lame. Kind of defeats the purpose of trying to cut back on syrupy sugariness. So instead, I reached for something a little more unique. Here I have a bottle of uh, Ramazzotti uh, Amaro, uh, Asano Ramazzotti. It's uh, a cola forward Amaro, meaning that it tastes predominantly like, uh, like cola root, but it also has, you know, particularly strong notes of anise, like black licorice and menthol, which I mean, is, doesn't sound pleasant, but it actually is. These Amaros are like Italian digestive liqueurs. They're, they're sweet, but they're less sugary than a soda would be. And it has all of the same flavor composition of a Coca-Cola without any of that insane sugar. So we're going to use it to make a deconstructed Cuba Libre. This is gonna be a shaken base cocktail that we're gonna lengthen with some soda. And to start, I need to quarter half of a large lime. We're gonna take half that lime, quarter it, and then trim off the pith in the center. Toss those into our shaker. And then we have to address sugar because there does have to be some sugar to balance this out. There are a couple different options. The one I'm gonna go for today is a sugar in the raw, which is turbinado sugar. Turbinado sugar is not as processed. It's still granulated, but not to the extent that, you know, like a white baking sugar would be. It's got a little bit more character and it helps replicate the flavor of a cola soda um, pretty well. The only difference is that, or the problem rather, is that it doesn't like to dissolve very easily, so you're gonna have to work it a little bit to get it going. We're gonna do four tablespoons, excuse me, teaspoons of turbinado sugar. It's gonna take a muddler and press those limes down to express out those oils from the peels and the juice from the flesh. And we wanna make sure we're working this pretty good. You don't wanna overdo it so it's not too bitter, uh, but you do wanna make sure all of that sugar does get saturated. With our limes and sugar muddled, we're gonna do one, and I'm gonna say one and a half ounces of Ramazzotti. That's most of our flavor there. So we're gonna make sure that that's a nice solid sized pour. And we're gonna follow that up with one and a half ounces of a Cuban rum specifically. I would say you could do either Bacardi, that's a pretty good go-to, you could find that pretty easy. But if you wanted to step it up a tier, you can go to Havana Club three year, which would be pretty good. Uh, and I don't think it has any Cuban origin. I no longer have my bottle anymore. I finished it off a while ago, but Plantation Three Star is also quite good here. Um, I don't think it's technically thematically appropriate, but I, it'll, it'll probably still work. We're gonna grab some ice and then give this a nice good shake to chill and dilute. We're going to do our regular one cube hole and one cube cracked portion for this, just like we would any other cocktail. We're gonna cap that up, tap that down, shake that for about 12 seconds. Not too long, you don't wanna over dilute. For our glass, you're gonna want something nice and tall for a long drink. Uh, I would say a Collins is appropriate in volume, shape, and size. Uh, this is a tumbler, so it's considerably larger than that. I'm gonna make up for the difference in space by filling it with ice. Before we pour our cocktail in, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in some of our seltzer water, which I'm going to just pour off the side to get the effervescence started. One last shake to combine and then double strain over the ice. I'm gonna hit that with just a little bit of extra seltzer water, get it up to our top line. Do a gentle push up and down around some of this ice to get it combined so that there's no 
separation. And we need to garnish. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a piece of lime here. A nice little slit in a piece of lime and put that on the edge as a garnish. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my deconstruction of a Kiwi Libre called a Radio Free Cuba. All right, with our station nice and cleaned up, let's go ahead and give it a taste. Uh, first of all, I wanna point out too, it actually looks a lot like a rum and coke. The color is very similar and is meant to be reminiscent. So you look at that and you go, oh yeah, that's probably a Cuba Libre. Let's go ahead and uh, give it a taste. Salute. Yeah, that's a rum and coke, but like a way cooler rum and coke. <laughs> It tastes a lot like a cola, but that Amaro does have a lot more going on. Underneath of it, you've got this sort of bitter, you know, kind of gentian root flavor to it. It's a little bit more intense. And frankly, if you're not crazy about that, you can pull that spec back to like one and a quarter or one or one ounce instead of one and a half. Uh, and you'll get more of the cola coming through, but that's a lot of what you're tasting, this very cola root forward flavor. Just with, a, you know, some extra bitterness on the back end. And then two, you know, from the lime oils, they are contributing to that just a little bit. The thing is, it's still friendly. It's got a nice sweetness up front, and it, it definitely reads like a soda lengthened drink, like a Cuba Libre. You still get some of that very gentle, you know, nature of the Bacardi in there and the sugar. I mean, it's hard to detect, but it's definitely functioning in the background to, to give some of those raw sugar flavors. In all honesty, I don't know if it if it's really necessary to use turbinado sugar. I just like to because it's more natural and ingredient. You could probably split base this two teaspoons of white sugar, two teaspoons of light brown sugar. It would probably dissolve a little bit better and you'd get a very similar flavor profile. So if that's more convenient, do that. But in any case, that sweetness is enough to like level everything out. The, the citrus oils and the citrus juice combined together into it definitely give it this very full acidic flavor um, and it and, and, and like not in a bad way but like they give it the sort of full spectrum of what the citrus can be and put it into the drink which kind of makes that lime portion of a cuba libre more alive and, and welcoming and fascinating and i think it works really really well to distinguish a radio free cuba from a cuba libre i wish i spoke spanish i would say radio free cuba in spanish damn that is good <laughs> it's just everything you like about a Cuba Libre without any of like the, you know, the high fructose corn syrup or the intense sugariness. And, and, and honestly, it veers a little bit away from the portions of the Coca-Cola flavor profile that I think people are a little bit less a fan of. Cause I always see Coca-Cola as like, yep, cola for sure, but also like vanilla and, and raisin. And those things are unwelcome in the natural profile of their soda, but I think they can be something else. And uh, this, 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 this is what they could be. And it's really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, man, it's just, it's just way cleaner tasting than a regular rum and Coke. And I think just about anybody can get behind that, especially considering, you know, people are a lot more cognizant of, you know, proof in drinks and how much sugar is in drinks. I recently bartended a party and there were a couple people there who had to watch the sugar intake. And they were like, what can you make? that has no added sugar, but it's still sweet. And I'm like, wow, that's a difficult prospect because all sours need to be balanced with some kind of sugar. And really only a few cocktails really, really carefully take into consideration how to do that. This I think is a way to approach a Cuba Libre with a more refined and knowledgeable amount of sugar content, which is good for people. And you know, in general, and anybody who's watching the sugar specifically, <laughs> So that is a Radio Free Cuba, a nice quick video for you guys today. Uh, I'm, I'm tired, my back hurts, and I wanna go play Fallout. So I am going to sign us off, but first we're going to read yet another entry from our book, Crisp Toasts. We are still in the section on Absent Friends. In fact, we haven't left the first page yet, and the, uh, the book is uh, 136 pages long, so <laughs> we've got a ways to go. Without dilly-dallying any further, we read our uh, toast today, which goes, to our absent friends, although they are out of sight, we recognize them with our glasses. That's a that's a fun little double entendre, I like that. If you guys enjoyed this quick little video, go ahead and subscribe down below and click that like button to tell me you enjoyed it because I'll keep doing stuff like this if you do. I make a new video every single Friday and then sometimes on Tuesdays, especially when there's a, you know, a cool variation of a cocktail that we talk about on a Friday. Not the case today because I need extra time to research the next episode for Friday, so 
keep an eye out for that. If you want updates on like the stuff that I'm testing out, like in my bar when I'm not filming, uh, follow me on Instagram. I post pictures of all my stuff there. And then I usually do videos on TikTok for the stuff I do on this channel and then some extra stuff too. All my socials are showing up on the screen. So just follow them if you want to, it's fun. All that said, we are set for today. So you guys have a great rest of your afternoon and please remember to drink responsibly. Have a great rest of your day and bye-bye.